Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, welcome to all of you who are in the worship center this morning, and a special welcome to those of you who are online. You are part of our community too, and your presence here makes a difference. Uh, well, we trust that our presence together this morning after a long, stormy night reconnects us to God and to one another and to all the places that we're called. Um, so we're grateful that you are here. Um, today, we our text is the parable of the wedding banquet. So Jesus, again, is our teacher, um, teaches us about radical hospitality, abundance, connection to one another, and Pastor Beth is going to open up that word for us today. So as we prepare our hearts uh, for confession, please rise as you are able uh, for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Love as God loves. Amen. Children, tell our hearts are 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, God of all people, we need to move out to see the world from another's view, stir our bodies and spirits to engage in new ways so that we may experience the wideness of your love. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture lesson is found in the 14th chapter of Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit at the lowest place so that when your host comes, they may say to you, friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous." Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus. Amen. I mentioned earlier this summer that we are in this long season of the church year called Ordinary Days. If you think about faith, like working out, this is the time that you add a little bit more weight to your lifting repetitions. When you try to hold your plank for 15 more seconds. When you stretch yourself to run or walk a little bit farther, add one more burpee to your cardio circuit. And I'm also mindful of anyone that's working on occupational therapy or physical therapy. Same goes for that, stretching yourself to get to your recovery. In order to get stronger, to run longer, you need to extend yourself. Even though we may not be able to sense it, we are being stretched in our faith these days. Jesus is thick into his ministry in the Gospel of Luke, and it's not only miraculous healings as he makes his way to towns and villages, but the way he teaches in the daily interactions and events how he disrupts the ways things have always been to speak a new reality, to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here and worthy of being noticed. Jesus teaches not by lofty ideas or doctrinal arguments, but by engaging in the moment and lingering in the places we would not expect God to be practicing what he wants the world to know about God, who loves the world so much. And often, it's not well received. He is pushing people in the world to see as God sees, and it disrupts the status quo. Just as Mary sang of when she found out she was to birth the Messiah, the Son of God, Mary sings, he will cast the mighty from their thrones, and fill the lowly with good things. Well, that's awesome news for the lowly, but not always a smooth ride for the mighty. And so in this story, we hear right away that the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely, trying to catch him in the act of something that would get him in trouble. But what they could not know, it was actually in that moment that Jesus was teaching them by doing. Author and organizational psychologist Adam Grant had a recent social post that said, parents try to teach values in conversation, but children learn more by observation. No matter what we say, Kids discover what matters to us by watching what we do. Where we focus tells them what we prize. A key to being a good role model is paying attention to your attention. And he also shared this cartoon. Now, before we get all tangled up in Grant's insight, I don't think this is limited to parents, it's for all people. And before you feel too good or too bad for your focus these days, there's a simple truth that we may want to consider. Where we focus, where we show up, where we sit, tells the world what we prize. And maybe Jesus in this story is telling the Pharisees the hierarchy of this time and us at Mount Olivet not to focus on where we sit or where we preach, but to see a bigger view of all who are invited to the table. As the Pharisees watch closely, Jesus speaks about humbling oneself to see life from a different view pushing back at the social structure of the day where the rich lay on couches around the house where women and slaves and the poor had no place. Jesus is teaching 
you are missing out on life if you stay on the same seat, especially the seats of privilege. I remember hearing a story of a young girl who grew up going to a country club, and the club decided to close down. So she came to her parents and asked a simple question. So now, how are people to learn to swim? Not aware that learning to swim can happen behind the lessons in a pristine pool. Not even knowing swimming lessons were offered through community education at the local school pool or YMCA, or the simple joy of learning how to swim by jumping off of a dock in the summer. She only knew life from the country club view. I was so pleased with my frequent flyer gold status through Northwest, now Delta, when I worked for Wells Fargo, only to notice again the view from seat 38B and 24E when I became a pastor. You did not come here today for Jesus to tell you about privilege or how we get stuck sitting in the front row seats, the VIP club. And honestly, it wouldn't be worth God being born in flesh to teach us table etiquette. Jesus is trying to get across what the well-fed, well-positioned guests were missing, the view from another angle, and it is a life-changing view. You see, Jesus came to save the mighty and the lowly, and maybe that is the good news. The party gets more fun and less predictable when everyone is included and there's no assigned seats. There's nothing like class structure and vulnerability of a high school lunch. And so every year about this time, my prayer is that every kid in every school has someone to sit with at lunch. There is nowhere to hide in middle school or a high school cafeteria, and the table of the well-known and the well-loved are always intimidating. We had fruit roll-ups as part of a school lunch when I was a sophomore in high school. And Steve decided to make the world's largest fruit roll-up. So starting with his own sticky strawberry pancake, he asked everyone for theirs. And with each person and each table added another layer to the roll. And for an instant, for a moment, it didn't matter if you were cool or popular. The nerd table had something to offer, and so did the band geeks, the football players, and the kids who never said a word. It was a complete waste of food, and it might have been one of the most beautiful examples of what te Jesus is teaching about today. Of all the ways that God could show us what grace looks like, he chooses a table that only offers everyone a little bit of bread and a sip of wine. There's always more stools and space at the table. The promise at that meal is there is a place for all. No one gets more or less when we don't worry about portion or preparations, we soak in the abundance and we notice who we're sitting next to. It is joy and delight and grace that simply comes by showing up, opening our hands to receive what is set before us and to be a part of the party. In a couple weeks, we'll come back to church this fall. Honestly, it's the first time in two years that we can fully be present. And we offer what we have, and I think most of it these days is simply showing up as our presence. And maybe if you dare, sit in a new place and worship. Meet someone you don't know. Try something new. Get involved to see another view. I am not sure what the fruit roll-up will be for us at Mount Olivet, but God has invested that much in the world 
that nothing is off limits for us to be swept away in a grace and delight for all people. And I can assure you, the best seat in the house will be wherever you sit. Amen. Please stand as we sing. profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We enter our offering time now and we reflect on the ways that we are called um, to this community and to the world. Um, Our gifts, our talents, our financial resources, yes, but especially 
our peace the way that we offer peace to God and to one another. Your offering to support the mission we have at Mount Olivet can be placed in the basket or in the box in the Welcome Center. And now receive these words. The peace of God be with you all. If you are online, please type your peace comments uh, into Facebook, and we will receive them there. Uh, Kids, your donations go to feed hungry people. Please share and receive a sign of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us a way of everlasting life. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We meet at this table um, in some sense to re be reminded that we are all invited here, full stop. We all have a place at this table, Christ's table. We can trust in this abundance, so open your hearts to it because it is for you. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you. And for those of you here, ushers will guide you forward. Wafers are gluten-free, wine is dark in color, and the juice is light. Come now, for all has been prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Uh, we pray as community now, and the way that we do that here at Mount Olivet is that um, I will offer a petition, a short petition, and then ask you to raise your hand um, and, and pray for something that's on your heart this morning. Um, and then uh, Pastor Beth will be looking online to those um, prayers that we receive online. So let it, with that, let us pray. Gracious God, um, you invite us to the table, um, and it's a, it's a strange table because um, it's a table where the last um, may be first, and the humble and the mighty trade places. Um, so let us uh, today share in your wisdom and your abundance without fear of scarcity. Um, Send us your spirit so that we not only um, speak, uh, speak of these things, but that we walk the talk, that we take a different seat um, at the table, that we notice a wider view, um, a more beautiful view, um, that we put out a few more stools at our table, um, and then our hearts would be changed. Uh, God, in your mercy. Your prayer. What prayers do we have this morning? Yes, Bob. Uh, Bob prays for his friend, uh, his dear friend, and his oldest son who has struggled with substance abuse disorder uh, uh, problems his whole life and who uh, passed away yesterday from a drug overdose. God, um, there are no words um, for this kind of a tragedy, and yet uh, we are here to pray for... Um, this young man, um, we know, God, that you care for him now as ever. Um, and we just ask that um, his family and his friends uh, would be surrounded by your love and care um, and uh, that support would, would be there when it's needed um, to help through this grieving process that is... Um, almost unthinkable. So God, uh, we just pray for this young man and his family and all that, all who love him. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Vicki. Vicki um, prays for um, her cousin, Ingus, and um, Ingus's son, uh, Joseph, who also is um, experiencing substance abuse problems. Um, God, uh, come close to this family and to Joseph. Um, help him understand um, your love. Um, and and his place at that table of love and uh, surround the whole family with support that they need um, to encourage and to encourage Joseph and um, to help Joseph find the um, find the care that he needs God in your mercy in our prayer yes Barb Hmm. 
Uh, Barb prays for her twin grandsons, Ben and Joe, who are going off to college. This is a um, an exciting time. It's um, it's a time of anxiety too, as we move into two in, into different worlds here, switching into uh, from summer to fall, and all the newness that comes with that, and and opportunities. So we just pray um, blessings for Ben and Joe um, that they might find. Um, close friends at college that they might um, be uh, just excited about their learning um, and on a path for success. So God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, Nancy. Nancy prays for her childhood friend Dale, who passed away this week. Um, we just we know that God cares for Dale now, um, also, and um, and we just ask that uh, God, you would come close to Dale's family, um, provide the support system that they need, including Nancy. Um, and that his life uh, would be a blessing and remembered. So, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers online. Prayers for Rindy Erdman's mom, Shirley, who has an abdominal obstruction that cannot be treated and has entered hospice. So, Rindy is in Iowa with her mom, and in this sacred time between life and death, uh, for Rindy and her brothers to usher her mom into this new promise of life and uh, for God's presence to be made known in this real sacred space and for Shirley's life, um, even now. God, in your mercy. We lift up these prayers, uh, the ones that we spoke today, but also the ones that are unspoken on our hearts, that uh, these prayers uh, would make a difference, God. Um, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, we have a special blessing this morning. Um, as many of you know, Amy McGrew um, has served us so well as the Interim Director of Children's Ministry over the last year. And Amy's last Sunday in this capacity is today, but thankfully it's not goodbye because Amy is a member of Mount Olivet um, and will continue to be part of this community. But Amy, will you come forward? Um, we would like to bless you and wish you Godspeed in your new role. We can clap after. <laughs> Amy, your ministry among us as Interim Director of Children's Ministry has embodied such a clear spirit of justice and peace. We give thanks for the way you have kept baptismal promises for so many people in the congregation over the last year. You've encouraged our imagination. You've affirmed questions You've invited prayer. You've blessed our chaos. Um, you've challenged us to look ahead. And you've helped everyone keep uh, safe and feel love in this community. And so today we give thanks for you and bless you as your ministry moves forward. So let us pray. Gracious God, bless your servant, Amy. Surround them with gratitude and love in this season of change that they would sense your presence and movement in their daily life. Thank you for giving Amy to us to know as a sibling in Christ and a worker for peace. Continue to use them to bless the church and the world through Jesus. Amen. Thanks. Oh, we can clap now. <laughs> and now I'll invite uh, Beth McGrew King to do the announcements. Good morning, everyone. 
So as you might know, right after this service, we have a congregational meeting here at 1015. If you're online and want to join us and didn't sign up, put a comment, and as soon as I'm done with announcements, I'll run out and I will send you the link um, and let you know how to join us via Zoom. And then also, I'm really excited that Faith Formation registration is open for this fall. Programming starts at age four and goes through grade 12. I'm super excited about the work that Pace and Rich have put in planning for this fall and would love to have you all be a part of it. If you're interested in supporting that ministry as a volunteer, contact Pace because he has looking for help with children's ministry, particularly on Wednesday. But also Rich is looking for fifth grade guides. So if you have an interest in hanging out with fifth graders and showing them God's love and helping them form community, check in with Rich or you can find me this morning since Rich isn't here today. And last, we are hiring a faith community coordinator who will answer the phones, welcome people to the office, and manage the administrative and database needs for staff in the building. Applications are being accepted until September 2nd. So if you want more information about that or want to refer that to someone, come see me. And then Joy Miller, with her gifts and experience, is moving to worship coordinator, solicitating people and logistics for worship services and events. So we're super excited for this a little bit of shift for Joy and all of her gifts that she's bringing to Mount Olivet. And that's what I've got. So I'm going to hand it back over to Kristen and Beth. Let's rise now for our ascending song. <laughs> A little instruction for you before you are blessed. We do not have fruit roll-ups today, uh, but we do have coffee. So if you're interested in grabbing a cup of coffee, it's um, about seven minutes to 10. We need a couple minutes to set up in here for the meeting. And there's also a table uh, with little die cuts. If you would just write a message to Amy so we can send her on her way with this garland of gratitude. Uh, you're welcome to do that. And then please come back in the sanctuary. Um, we will be starting promptly at 10.15. Um, and receive now this blessing. 
The God of peace, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.